Hi there, welcome to IndyCar, a slightly wonky camera, on the 2nd of February. Now, as you're probably already aware by now, the Conservative Party, which is obviously the government in the UK at the moment, has decided to level up, in inverted commas, the United Kingdom, uh, by providing funds to particularly the Red Wall, or the so-called Red Wall cities of Northern England, which were conned into voting Conservative on the basis that it was going to get them Brexit, they're now forced really to do something, uh, basically throw a bone, I suppose, to the cities of Northern England, um, which is what, of course, they promised to do, uh, that they would level up the whole UK economy by giving money left, right and centre to all of the so-called regions. The only problem with this is the amount of money that they're talking about is not very much. Um, as far as I understand it, the whole red wall uh, the, the gift that they want to give to the people of the north of England amounts to about £100 million, uh, mostly, I think, going to places like Manchester and Leeds. However, they have also announced that they want to open a new technology accelerator hub in Glasgow, a kind of um, Scottish Silicon Valley or a Silicon Glen kind of thing uh, in the city of Glasgow, and that the, the Tories are planning to fund this directly themselves, which of course goes directly against the devolution settlement where they are not supposed to be doing anything in Scotland which is already devolved to the Holyrood administration. But of course the Tories don't really care about that and the levelling up that they're talking about is not really designed to level up. What it's designed to do is to pull together all of the strands, all of the places in the United Kingdom which are currently fed up with being ruled by London in some kind of effort to consolidate the Union. And uh, not only are they wanting to uh, impose this technology hub on Glasgow, which incidentally probably doesn't really need it since we have some of the finest universities already doing this exact sort of thing, and we already have a technology hub started by uh, the SNP government, which is looking at new materials technologies and new developments in technology. They're wanting to impose this upon us. Now, as far as I'm aware, the Glasgow City Council wasn't consulted, the Scottish Government wasn't consulted, the people of Glasgow weren't consulted. There's no planning permission for this so-called hub. There's no actual place where it's meant to go, as far as I'm aware. And the share of the funding which is to be allocated to this huge uh, bribe, I think you'd have to say this is, um, is a share of £100 million. Now, £100 million is not a lot. I mean, that's a tenth of a billion pounds. It's not much. And let's face it, we already have a very active uh, electronics industry. We have a very active digital industry, and most of that is centred around Dundee. So why they've picked Glasgow, I mean, it can only really be a political choice, I think possibly to rub Nicola Sturgeon's nose in it because her constituency is in Glasgow. However, it's not the end of the story. They're not just proposing to level up in Glasgow, but they want to level up all the islands as well of the United Kingdom. And I'm not just talking about the Scottish islands here, we're talking about the Isle of Man, the Isle of Wight, the Scilly Isles, in fact, virtually every island around the United Kingdom they're planning to give some kind of bribe to as well. So this is not really a levelling up so much as a massive uh, sort of UK-wide bribe to everybody uh, to keep supporting the Tory government. And frankly, I don't think it's going to work at all. And apart from anything else, Glasgow is doing fine, but thank you very much, as it is. Uh, having just, I don't know about you, I just uh, heard the other day that the Kelvin Hall in Glasgow, which has been lying empty for a long time, but which has recently been completely refurbished with new roof and uh, new interior, is now to be a major um, Centre for the film industry. It's going to be sound and uh, sound stages and film studios. So there is already a great deal of uh, investment in new industries, high technology industries, and the entertainment industry already coming to Glasgow. Now you've heard me mention before the um, the the now infamous Internal Market Act, which is supposedly allowing. United Kingdom to invest in infrastructure projects in any part of any of the devolved administrations without anybody's permission. 
But this isn't that. Uh, this is something different. This is the so-called leveling up fund, which frankly is a drop in the bucket. I mean, if we get 50 million quid out of this fund, I'd be very surprised with only 100 million uh, being shared between the, the red wall cities in Glasgow. I don't think we're going to get very much out of this. And frankly, I think it's a bit of a pathetic move by the Tory party, basically thumbing their nose to Nicola Sturgeon. So it's not going to work. And as I've said many times before, it's not necessary. The Scottish economy is doing very well, thank you very much, and its digital industries are thriving. Oh yes, there could be more uh, funding brought in, and if the Scottish Government had the ability to do it and had its own central bank, they could throw billions at it, not just a few millions. This is, um, again, the kind of tokenism that we've come to expect from a Tory government, which really is only really concerned with itself getting wealthier and its friends getting wealthier, and mostly concerned with the success of London rather than the surrounding parts of the rest of the United Kingdom. However, it doesn't really do anything uh, to endear the people of Scotland to the Tory party in any way. I mean, we can see through that straight away, it is a bribe. It's an obvious bribe. Uh, and this is now another way in which the Tories have found to undermine devolution. Now, the Tories hate devolution. They don't like the idea of the Scottish government having its own funds and being able to make its own decisions. They never liked that idea, even way back in, uh, when was it, 1996, when finally we had a referendum to have a devolved parliament in Edinburgh. And remember, I think it was... Uh, 68%, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong, somebody correct me, but I think it was 68% of the Scottish population wanted devolution. And if that's still the case, then the Tories are going against 68% of the Scottish population in doing this. It sidelines the entire Holyrood Parliament and makes it seem irrelevant, which of course is the other thing that is motivating the Tories to do this. Anything which makes Holyrood look redundant and useless and makes it seem like a, a powerless talking shop is good in their books. However, it again is all part of the steady drip drip erosion of Scottish devolution and I dare say it will be Welsh devolution as well. And if they thought they could get away with it in Northern Ireland, I'm sure they would do it there as well. And they may already be doing it there as well. I've noticed also today that the uh, the warmongers in the United Kingdom are shaking their sabres again. We've got Boris Johnson over in Kiev at the moment, apparently negotiating or talking with um, President Zelensky. Now, what is he actually saying to Mr. Zelensky? Because the United Kingdom, although it's part of NATO, is talking to the Ukraine, which is not part of NATO. And uh, there is no way that NATO troops or British troops will be allowed into the Ukraine to help repel any potential Russian invasion. The Russians are claiming that Boris Johnson is helping America to try to start a war in the Ukraine. I'm not sure if that's the case, but certainly Boris Johnson is trying to make himself look relevant and also trying to escape the scrutiny of Westminster after the um, the Partygate scandal, which he hopes, I dare say, is now going to blow over since the Sue Gray report um, seemed to be such a damp squib, which everybody expected it to be. However, how does that leave the Scottish Parliament? Well, it leaves the Scottish Parliament looking like what it is, a devolved parliament, which is being undermined by Westminster. How much undermining can they do? Well, it just depends on how much money they decide to throw into the Scottish uh, infrastructure projects that they envisage, bridges, tunnels, new roads, new railway tracks, new community centres, or whatever else they plan to offer. But I've not heard anything yet from the City Council of Glasgow about whether they were consulted in any way about this, and if they were, what was being proposed? Because right at the moment, I don't know what's being proposed, other than the fact that they're calling it a technology accelerator hub. That could be anything. Um, and I'm trying my best to figure out where on earth they would put this thing, uh, and which bit of land they've got in mind, whether they've got planning permission for this, how much it's going to cost, will they be able to staff it? I mean, if you take £50 million, pounds, that might be able to put a building up somewhere if you had planning permission, but it wouldn't be enough to fit it out. It wouldn't be enough to put in all the high technology stuff that you need for this kind of incubator accelerator or whatever you want to call it. 
And as I've said many times before, these things already exist at our universities and in our companies. So it's not really needed. I dare say that the, uh, the digital industries of Scotland would be delighted if they had such a thing. But it could certainly be done better if we were independent. We could spend more money on it. We could staff it properly if we had the ability to a, have our own bank, our own currency, and to be able to uh, create the currency that we want to use for such projects. And again, this comes all the way back to being independent. Without independence, we can't do these things. Without independence, the Scottish Parliament is wide open to being undermined in this way. The devolution settlement said that whatever was not reserved to Westminster was automatically devolved, but we know that isn't the case because many of the powers which were supposed to come back from the European Union to the Scottish Parliament were actually retained by Westminster. 111 different uh, responsibilities for Scotland's departments were taken away and we were left with one or two very minor powers, which we probably would already have had anyway. So, as far as I can see, this is a pattern of behaviour which is going to accelerate. So the accelerator is not so much an accelerator for technology, it's an accelerator for undermining the devolved parliament and for making it irrelevant. And for trying to uh, sideline it to the point where the voters of Scotland begin to look at Holyrood and say, why are we spending all this extra money on an extra layer of bureaucracy when we can get our money straight from Westminster? And that's precisely what this is all about. Now, I mentioned to you the idea of the islands levelling up as well, and this is sort of like phase two of the Tories' master plan to try to divide and conquer by offering the various island communities of the northern tip of Scotland and off the western isles of Scotland different deals to the ones here on the mainland so that they can be more independent of the Scottish Parliament and so they are getting their funding directly from London as well. This is all a part of divide and conquer. It is a very old method that the Tories have used for generations to keep Scotland in its place. The problem for the SNP at the moment is they are powerless to do anything about it other than to complain about it. Uh, I think Kate Forbes said that she welcomed the extra spending, but that it cut right across the devolution settlement. I think that's putting it mildly. I think it, it completely wipes its feet on the devolution settlement. It makes a mockery of it. And alongside their ability now to use these direct injections of capital into any project and any program in Scotland that they feel like means that the devolution settlement is now largely meaningless. And if that's the case, then the whole devolution deal is virtually off. They've broken the agreement and Scotland is in a situation now where it is in direct conflict with London because it used to be that we would complain about what London was doing on our behalf in areas which weren't devolved. But now we have them polluting the devolved settlement and interfering in it directly. And that is something which the Scottish Government should not and cannot ever put up with. It's, it'll be very interesting to see how the local councils, and particularly the City Council of Glasgow, responds to this particular piece of news. I'm hoping that they will respond in the same way I have and say, you're kidding. You know, there's no way that you can do this, dangling this carrot in front of us at the moment when you're denying us funds in every other respect is just a bribe. It's so obviously a bribe that I can't imagine anybody, any politician, any business person, or even any university being fooled by this. Uh, and so we're left again in this situation where we have a very short period of time in which to escape now from the dismantling of devolution which has now begun and as you know if the uh, privatization of the NHS in England goes further and faster then that means there will be corresponding cuts to our health funding as well despite the fact that we control where the funding goes we cannot control how much of the funding is given to us through the Barnett formula that depends on how much the English government spends on its health service. And at the moment, this drip, drip erosion is wearing away at the powers of Holyrood and it's wearing away 
at the devolution settlement and eventually we will be left with just the talking shop we will be left with something which is like a, a large regional council about the size of the strathclyde regional council and its heyday and i seem to remember the tories hated strathclyde regional council as well because they couldn't control it either anyway i've rambled on rather a long time but i think my message to you today is don't believe a word of this these are direct bribes being and offered as inducements to councillors in every part of Scotland. And this will see the beginning of the end of Holyrood if we don't put a stop to it. But the only way we can put a stop to it, and the only way we can preserve Holyrood now, is to vote for independence. Because everything that uh, is happening with the Tory party at the moment is designed to gradually erode devolution until there is nothing left of it and it becomes pointless and nobody wants it anymore and that's exactly what the Tories would like us to think. So when you're viewing the news today just remember that this is not levelling up, this is a binding together operation, this is trying to haul in every disparate part of the United Kingdom that wishes to leave the United Kingdom. This is to settle up a debt that the Tories owe to the north of England, and it's nothing to do with Scotland. We are only getting the uh, the bones from the table when it comes to this levelling up fund. And what they're offering Glasgow is a pittance, really, compared to what is really necessary to make Scotland's economy thrive. And that requires billions of pounds invested in renewables, in green technologies of all kinds, in decarbonising our existing uh, infrastructure and decarbonising our existing industries. We can only do that when we have our own bank, when we have our own currency, and when we have recovered our uh, trading rights with the European Union so that we can start making foreign currency again and start to become wealthy again. That's about it for me today. I just thought it was worth sticking my oar in the water when it comes to this particular subject. But I expect to see a lot more of this from the Tories, and I expect to see an awful lot more interference uh, in using the Internal Markets Act to start offering more bribes to more councils in more parts of Scotland. It's not just going to happen in England. In England, they're trying to buy, or not buy, but they're trying to maintain their votes in the Red Wall. In Scotland, this is just a pathetic and transparent effort to bribe everybody into thinking that Holyrood is pointless and it's not going to work. But the clock is ticking now. Nicola Sturgeon needs to announce uh, the independence referendum bill at Holyrood. And I think that is a matter of urgency now. The clock is ticking. The erosion has begun and it's going to get faster and faster the longer we leave it. So let's get on, get that referendum bill through Holyrood quickly. Let's act on it. Let's have a referendum. Ignore whatever is said about a referendum by London. Ignore what is said about a referendum by the unionist parties in Scotland and press on until we get that yes vote. And then we can declare our independence and then we will be able to return to Europe. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.